going to read the word of the Lord and get right into it. You guys are awesome. I love this church. I love your pastors. Wow. Just amazing. Amazing. I got to put them in one of my movies because as a couple, they look like they should be in Hollywood. It should be in movies. Si no por lo menos una telenovela allí. His name in the telenovela would be Guillermo. Right? He looks like a Guillermo. And her name would be como María Socorro Guadalupe Sánchez Rivera para siempre Rodríguez. Que viva la revolución para siempre, hombre. If you don't speak Spanish, just repent. John chapter 9. John chapter 9. As Jesus was walking, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Underline that part real quick. He was blind from birth. Verse 6, he spit on the ground. That's messy. This is Jesus. We have some hygiene issues here. Made mud with the saliva messier. Spread the mud. Who does that? Number seven. He, then he said, like a boss, after he made a mess in this man's eyes, who was already blind. Here's a blind man. Jesus made him more blind. This is the first double blind study in the Bible. I'm here all week. Number seven. He told them, go wash yourself. The man went and washed. Now, I'm going to compare this to Mark chapter 8. Watch this. They arrived at Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man, different blind man to Jesus. They begged him to touch him and heal him. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village, spitting on the man's eyes. Hence, the common denominator is a spit. Spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, can you see anything now? Underline that part. Can you see anything now? The man looked around and said, yeah, I mean, yes. I see I see people, but I can't see them clearly. They look like trees walking around. We have questions here. Did Jesus miss it? Like, what happened? What, what happened? And why would Jesus ask after a miracle, hey, did it work? Never done that before. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes, and his eyes were open. His sight was completely restored. So I say complete restoration. Repeat after me, complete restoration. Everybody repeat after me. In 2024, I will see completely restored, not some of the things, but everything the enemy robbed, attempted to kill, and destroy in my family, in my surroundings, complete restoration in the name of Jesus. And he could see everything clearly. I want to digress here. Can you see anything? I see, but they look like trees. And then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again. I want to speak to you in a very accelerated manner. Don't settle for trees. Don't settle for trees. One more time, the last holy harassment, intrusive move. Tell the person you like the most, don't settle for trees. Tell the one you ignored, don't settle for trees. If you're taking any notes, and good luck with that. Number one, don't settle for the old. Open your eyes to what you have never seen before. So as Jesus was walking, we're going we're gonna to juxtapose him. Who's going to be John 9? Who's going to be the, the muddy guy? All right, muddy guy. How you doing? Be careful what you volunteer for. So you're Mark 8, and you're John chapter 9. It, this man, that man, was not losing his sight. He did not lose his sight. He never had it in the first place. That guy was born blind. So this circumstance, scripturally speaking, facilitates the environment for Christ to reveal an ontological extension of the nature of his providence. What does that mean? With the woman of the issue of blood, he gave her back her health. With the invalid man at Bethesda, he gave him back his walk. With Lazarus, he gave him back his life. With that man, Jesus did not give him something he lost. He gave him something he never had in the first place. There is a difference between God restoring something you had and God giving you something you never had in the first place. I reference, our God is not just the God that restores. He is the one that gives us what we never had before. Isaiah 43, 19, I'm about to do something new. I've already begun. Do you not see it? I am making a pathway through the wilderness. I am creating rivers in the dry wasteland. I need you to get ready. God is about to do something new in you, with you, for you, through you, all for the glory of his name. I'm going to repeat that one more time. God is about to do something new in you, with you, for you, through you, all 
for the glory of his name. So stop trying to beg to get something we know. Listen, God is not interested in renovating your past. He is committed to releasing your future. So the question we have to ask ourselves and our families, in our faith, in our generation, in our nation, in our continent, are we ready to see what we've never seen before? We, we can't deny that in the past four years, we've seen some crazy stuff. I mean, some cuckoo for Cocoa Puff, crazy. ¿Qué pasó ahí? ¿Qué pasó? La suegra se manifestó con us. I mean, there's... We saw the effects of a global pandemic. We saw the ruins of unrest. We, we saw culture insisting that, that you have to bow to ideological worldviews and social constructs that are counterintuitive to the word and the will of God. We saw and continue to see a generation targeted by the spiritual architects of darkness with the message that there is no such thing as truth, holiness, God-defined identity, righteous sexuality, and personal responsibility. Let me take a minute and do it again. Every time I'm in a conference, I do it because there's enough faith in the room. With this amount of faith, there's enough faith in the room. For Are we streaming, Pastor? So there's enough faith in the room for us to work not only here in OC, but through the camera and just say to every power of darkness coming after our children, get your hands off our children in the name of Jesus. Let's do it one more time. Get your hands off our children and our children's children and our children's 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 children. Our children will not go to hell. Our children will not be lost. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your household will be saved. So we've seen the mess. If you go on Facebook, Instagram, X, YouTube, and speak to ChatGPT, you will see the mess. But what if I tell you in the name of Jesus, we're about to see messes become miracles. I'll do that one more time. We're about to see the mess become a miracle. That's not wishful thinking. In the past year, in the past 12 months, some strange stuff is happening around, around the world. We witnessed it. Listen, one year ago, Damar Hamlin died on Monday Night Football. I don't know if y'all take this like, like, oh, that happens all the time. No, you're watching Monday Night Football, and all of a sudden, boom, player dies. And he dies, both teams coalesce, begin to pray, and the young man who died came back to life. I don't know if y'all noticed, in the past year, you were alive to witness a live resurrection on national television. And we act like it happens every day. On the next, the next day on ESPN, please do your Google due diligence, don't take my word for it. The next day on ESPN, NFL Today, the, the, the host looks at the camera and he goes like, yeah, we can't ignore, we have to discuss what happened last night on Monday Night Football. And yesterday, I mean, beyond the playoff implications, Damar Hamlin died. And, and both teams pray. And he came back to life. So over here, the guy goes, the guy goes, yeah, we get that now. There's a, there's a protocol, concussion protocol already in place in the NFL. They should consider the sternum. Hitting in this area should be because obviously what happened here, there was a hit, an impact in the sternum. And the, and the guy over here goes like, yeah, 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 that's not the point. That's not the point. The point is this. He died. People prayed. He came back to life. The lady over here, the lady over here goes, and now, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah sure, that, that's true, but now there are playoff implications, like whether or not the NFL should cancel the playoffs for a week. Because we have some sensitivities that we have to deal with and navigate through the question of whether or not there are NFL health protocols. And the guy goes, that, that's another question for another day. That's not really the point. The point is this. He died. The, the, the medics confirmed he was dead. He was completely dead. People prayed and he came back to life. Look it up on YouTube, look it up. And then he says, on live television, he says, looking at the panel, he says, I think we should pray right now. <laughs> look it up. Usually they would cut to commercial break. That means the host went off, he went rogue. He went off the rails. So you would go on, but no, the, no commercial break. Las cámaras se mantuvieron ahí. And, they, and they're going like, no. And they, 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 they start, this is, dude, this is not TBN or Daystar. 
this is ESPN and they start praying and in the middle of the prayer the guy goes because we do know that the God that we serve has the power to heal the God come on freedom house we serve the God that has the power to make every mess into a miracle every mess if you believe it shout like you know it and praise We serve the God that has the power to make every message to a miracle. Every message to a miracle. But what no eye has seen, no ear heard, nor the heart of man imagines what God has prepared for those who love him. 1 Corinthians 2 9. We're seeing it right after that. Y'all know the story. There was a, a move of God in a place called Asbury, Kentucky. Right after that, you think it's a coincidence? Miracle revival? The same generation that, that's been deemed as the most non-Christian generation received the visitation of the Holy Spirit in a place that you and I probably are not going to go to for vacation. Asbury, Kentucky. Boom. Couldn't stop praying, worshiping, lifting up the name of Jesus. People traveled from all over America and different parts of the world because God showed up in a university campus. And then it spread to Baylor and different universities. God's moving. I mean, put that in perspective. Immediately after that, Greg Laurie, a, a friend from this region, he, he did a movie called The Jesus Revolution about the hippies and coming to Jesus and all that. And he was supposed to have made uh, seven million bucks in box office receipts. Man, it's made over $50 million. And, and y'all know a few months ago, he baptized over 4,000 people here at Pirates Cove. Are you following me? Immediately after that, 7,000 pastors and leaders gathered in Amsterdam in Europe. By the grace of God, I was there to sign a contract that by 2033, every single human being on the planet would receive a viable presentation of the gospel of Jesus. I don't know if you understand what this means. Right now, approximately 3 billion people, believe it or not, even with the internet, because countries that are totalitarian restrict the gospel. There are countries you can't reference Jesus or hear the name of Jesus through the internet or social media platforms because the countries have algorithms that prohibit, they censor because Jesus is a threat. Because anyone who experiences the fullness of Christ will be free. You didn't get that. Christ sets us free. Mind, body, soul, spirit. You still didn't get that. That's why this church is called Freedom House. When Jesus comes into your life, you're free. Every aspect of your life is free. You're free from generational curses, free from the lies of the enemy, free from addiction, free from the bondage of sin. You're free. Are there any free people in the house here in Freedom House here today? So we gathered in Amsterdam and we signed a contract that by 20, we're not saying everyone's going to get saved. We're saying everyone will receive a viable presentation of the gospel of Jesus with signs and wonders and healings and miracles following. So that means every single nation in the world will hear Jesus is the way. Every nation in the world without exception, not only every nation, every generation, and with great love, every letter in the alphabet from A to Z will hear that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So we're going to see it. We're going to see an amazing harvest. We're going to see messes become miracle. I'm going to ask you, if you believe that every messy area in your life will become a miracle before this year is over, raise one hand. If you really believe without exception, that there's no exceptions to that, that you're not going to settle just for like the majority of areas, but every area, every person in your life, every messy person in your life will become a miracle, raise both hands. And if you have enough faith in this room to believe that you're not going to wait till December 31st of 2024, you're believing that in this very season, it will come to pass, raise both hands and a foot. And if you come in agreement that there's not a person, an entity, a power, or a force that will be able to stop the mess from becoming a miracle, find the best praise you've given God in the past three years and give it to Him. mess is about to become God's miracle. The mess is about to become God's miracle. The mess is about to become God's miracle. Your family mess, your home mess, your health mess, your relational mess, your financial mess, your generational mess is about to become God's miracle. It's about to become God's miracle. 
1 Thessalonians 5.24, he who called you is faithful to do it. Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I'm about to see what I've never seen before. Every mess will become a miracle in my family, in my faith, in my church, in my relationships, in my community, in my thinking, in my actions, in my words, in my health, in my surroundings, in my generation. I'm about to see every mess become a miracle. I'm about to see the glory of Jesus like I have never, ever seen before. Give God one more clap offering if it's all you. So don't settle for the old. Get ready to see what you've never seen before. Number two, don't settle for excuses. Open your eyes to God's spirit. Open your eyes to God's spirit. He spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud. Go ahead. Go ahead, George Jesus. Échale más que no le importa este ahí como le pongo. It's like a makeover right there. It's like a, looks like Nightwing. Like, you look great, boss. You look awesome. Yeah. Here it is. Are there any questions? Here's what you learned from here, that the God of the process is the same God of the outcome. I'll repeat that. The God of the process is the same God of the outcome. The God of the wait is the same God of the suddenly. The process is temporary, but the promise is permanent. Do not make the temporary permanent. Do not confuse what you're going through with where you're going to. And if you are going through what you've never been through before, stop whining about it. It only means you're about to occupy promises you never occupied before. If the enemy is attacking your mind, there's a reason for that. If the enemy is attacking your health, there's a reason for that. If the enemy is attacking your finances, there's a reason for that. If the enemy is attacking your relationship, there's a reason for that. Whatever it may be, there's a reason for that. If the enemy is attacking it in January, February, it's only because of the rest of the year. God's about to bless it and use it for... process he spread the, he spreads he but, but this is he's Jesus but this guy Jesus spit and made mud and did that this guy he just spit directly poop uh-huh that's right anointed allergies baby <laughs> so you gotta love this because for both these guys come here this is Mark 8 and John 9 spit 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 common denominator two blind guys spit 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 what's in your spit All the negative people, what's in your spit? Germs. Virus, bacteria. Pessimists. All the positive people, DNA. This is not revelation. This is straight up science. No joke. Jesus literally, not metaphorically, he literally took his DNA and placed it on the eyes of a man who was born blind. No, literally. He went, oh, oh. his DNA. In other words, with your DNA, you can't see anything. With my DNA, you're about to see my glory. With your DNA, you are limited to what you can do. With my DNA, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. With your DNA, you're a permanent victim. With my DNA, you are more than a conqueror. With your DNA, you have trauma. With my DNA, you have a testimony. With your DNA, you have drama. With my DNA, you have destiny. With your DNA, you have fear. With my DNA, you have freedom. And with your DNA, you'll spend your life making excuses. With my DNA, you're about to make history for my glory in my name. I'm here to tell you, you don't have the spittle of Jesus. You have the spirit of Jesus. 
Jesus transferred the primary conduit, the deliverable mechanism, the reality of the fullness of the finished work of Christ via the conduit of his spirit, which means if with the spit, this guy got a miracle. Man, he saw what he never saw before. Imagine what we were about to see under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I need you to get ready. The Spirit of God empowers you like nothing else on this planet. You're about to be filled this year, not with depression, not with anxiety, not with fear, not with problems, not with hell, not with heartbreak. You're about to be filled afresh with the Spirit of the living God. And where that Spirit is present, there is power. Acts 1.8, there is freedom, 2 Corinthians 3.17, there is holiness, Galatians 5.16, there is victory, Romans 8.11, there is anointing, 1 John 2.27, you recognize that you are a temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 3.16, with that spirit, Ephesians 6.13, you have the right and the capacity, undergirded by 1 Corinthians 16.13, to stand. It enables you to do, that spirit enables you to see and to say and to be, to take authority. And to occupy promises. I'm going to say something a little bit interesting that's relevant to what's happening, but you'll get it into it in a second. That spirit just empowers you to say stuff that norm... Porque dice cosas que normalmente no... We went through this interesting... Our church family, we, we, we are based in Sacramento. We have a, a campus here in Downey. And there's something God's doing. So anyway, point to you is... Right after COVID, the church, well, the church, God just gave a harvest to the church and it really blew up. And to the point that we have more people than chairs. It's a great thing, just like here. And, and God blew it up. As a matter of fact, we've, never, we've been there for 13 years and we've never been down the road before. Just that level of capacity. The county came in and, and they, they, they did, they, you know, they did what counties do. It's, and it's not like Orange County. My county is not orange, just slightly pink. So, so... Um, so when mauve maybe but the, the point is they came in and they, they said you have too many people you can't be doing this you gotta you either add on services or, you, or we're gonna come in here and, and get you and you know, find you and all that so we mean we were like what happened right after that right so we get we get a call this we get a call my wife and I so we're going like you know I mean four services is rough we need to get it we need we need to be a building we need a building obviously we just can't you know so we get a call and 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 the call we got was like the building over there had like only 1,500 people, and we were having three services. And, and we, we, we just, I'm preaching four or five times the way I preach. I don't, you know, it's like, um, I mean, I mean, how much coffee can I possibly have in one day, right? <laughs> so, so we get a call by Coinconic, right? We get a call. A major ministry in the Northern California region. I'm going to be very nuanced about this here, but a major ministry, prominent ministry, called us up and said, Pastor Sam, we, we didn't survive COVID. Right next, a ministry close to us. And we said, whoa, we did, what do you mean? We didn't survive COVID. You know, we didn't make it. We, so we lost over a thousand people that were attending our church. And we, didn't, we, we don't have money to pay the bills. The, 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 just, and you already know, Pastor Sam, I want to remind you, we have three auditoriums. One has 3,000 seats. The other one has 1,000. And, and the third one has 300. The second one has 1,018. And the other one has 300. We have 47 acres. And it's on the highway frontage. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. It does carry some debt, measurable debt. Um, but, but again, so we heard and went, well, you know what? I got, this could, this, this could be God. So we, we got into preliminary meetings and we had meetings. And first meeting, second meeting, third meeting, fourth meeting. And, and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Every door, man, I mean, every door, got it. Opening, opening, opening. So finally they invited me. They, they, they go, all right, let's do it. Pastor Sam, bring your board in, your formal board. We'll have our board. Let's sign an MOU. We're going to go through and merge your ministry takes over our ministry. Let's talk about the process and let's just sign, let's come in and sign the MOU. But we're going to, our, board, our board may ask you questions. And I go, all right, because I've been discussing this with the pastor and the finance committee. So we finally, so we met, my team met, we met, I'm not going to tell you the name, we met at a coffee establishment where Jezebel's on the cup. So we went there and we sat down. And um, did I mention any names? Did I say any names? Did I mention any names? Did I? Did I mention names? Did I? No. Judge, people judging, thinking, and yeah. So, I just start Jezebel con. <laughs> and la copita, I get my almond milk latte, and we're discussing. So, we're going, dude, we're going, Pastor, did they ask? No, they never gave me a heads up on the questions. No idea. So, this is the meeting. 
this is the meeting. We signed the contract. This is it. We crossed the Rubicon. This is it. There's no, no turning back. So we're, let's do it. So pastor, what questions? And I go, I don't know. Fiduciary governance questions, attrition, risk management, liability, um, I'm not, debt management, how we, you know, how do we do it? All of that doing away with the name and, you know, the rebranding. You know. All right. I mean, question, maybe they're going to ask you to have a Slavic service, a Spanish service, all of that, all that. All right. We ready? Do you have any idea, guys? Okay, 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 okay. So we put on my jacket, boom, everybody, lattes, boom, boom, got into the car, crossed the street, one mile away, we went into the parking lot, got into the church, walked into the office. They were seated on that side, my board, me and my, my board members, we were seated here. A total of one, two, three, four, five with me seated on this side. So I sat here, boom, they go, Pastor Sam, thank you for coming. This is it, the contract meeting, we signed. And they look at me and across the table, they go, Pastor Sam, thank you for coming. He goes, no, we're honored to be here. An exciting day indeed. All right, we have a question for you. First question, first off the bat, first question, right? First question, I'm going, okay, right. And God looks at me and says, first question, I said, go, go ahead. Here's the question we have for you. Pastor Sam, our church ministry here, we, just like this verbatim, and his wife was there. We, at our church, we lean left. We want to know where your church leans. Now, you got to put this in perspective. Multiple things here, first of all. Never waited, never ever in my wildest dreams did I ever think that was the question. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking, the, cuando preguntaron esto, I'm looking, we lean left, where do you lean? And this is me, this is. <laughs> because part of me is going, is this a setup? Right? This, this has to be a setup. This, this can't be real. There's no one would ask that. I'm going. Mm. A sign and a wonder took place right after that. You want to hear what it is? Nothing came out of my mouth. <laughs> That's my team. That's a sign and a wonder. They've never seen that before. My team, his wife, the rest of the team, Jeff Carter, they're all here going like, Say, say something. <laughs> say, say something. Oh. They're all going like, what's wrong, pastor? Like, say something. And I didn't want to. So help me God, I didn't want to. Because I'm here, to, and this is, this is just like this. No hyped up, no embellishment for the person. No, this is. Because I was fighting with the Holy Spirit. It was me and the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit was telling me, say it. Go ahead, you know what to say. Go ahead, say it. And I'm going, no quiero. No, no, no quiero. Because I know, I knew that if I would say what he wanted me to say, we weren't going to end up with that building, which we didn't. So, so, so I'm, I'm going, I'm going, no, no. And he's going, say it, Sammy. I'm going, say it, Samuelito. And I'm so, you know, Holy Spirit versus you, you lose, right? So I lift, just like this, I lifted up my head and went, for, by the way, I'm a comedian. So when this happened, so help me God, part of my mind automatically said, dude, you have enough comedy here for the next three, five years. <laughs> so I lifted up my head and Holy Spirit said, say it. So I went, thank you for your question. I went, thank you. You're saying that this church ministry, that you lean left and you want to know where we lean. Well, I went. At new season, with great due deference, we don't lean. We stand. We stand. We stand. We stand on the word of God. We stand on the promises of God. We stand on the finished work of Christ. I intend whatever the Bible calls holy, we call holy. Whatever the Bible calls sin, we call sin. We don't lean to the left or to the right. We stand. We stand. Is there anyone here in OC who stands for the fullness of Christ? All those standing, lift up your hands. Repeat after me, I don't lean. I stand. I stand. I stand. With the Spirit of God, you don't lean, you stand. 
with the Spirit of God. We don't need churches that lean. We don't need Christians that lean. We don't need families that lean. We need believers that stand. I say stand. The Spirit of God, Jesus deposited His Spirit. He placed His Spirit inside of us, not for us to lean, but for us to stand. 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 Stand for righteousness. Stand for holiness. Stand for the Word of God, the truth of God. Stand for racial unity. Stand for biblical orthodoxy. Stand for your children. Stand for your family. Stand. Don't lean. Stand. Somebody shout like you're standing. With your hands raised right there where you're at. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for justice. Stand up. Stand. 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 Stand for biblical truth. Stand. For unbridled, grace-filled, blood-purchased love. The love that covers multitudes of sins. Stand. Don't lean. He gave us his spirit with his spit. That man saw what he never saw before. With his spirit, we will see and we will do for him what we have never seen and done before. I feel an anointing right now. God has called this house to stand. In Southern California, you stand. And because you stand, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Because you stand, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Because you stand, if God before you, who can be against you? Are there any standing believers in Freedom House here tonight? We stand. All right, stand with me. Stand with me. You are. Don't lean. That spirit enables us to stand. And by the way, don't just stand in the church. Stand up in the school board meeting. Stand up in the public sphere, in the public space. We need Christians that do not lean, but with the spirit of God in us, with us, for us, and through us, we stand. all said and done you're still standing if you receive this word lift up your hands repeat after me I don't lean I stand let me close with this point as you stand right there that's it Uh, uh, can you look up here real quick Jesus never did that to this guy does anyone know why Jesus, the spit, yes, but not the mud. Does anyone know why? Who was born blind? Which one? This guy. He wasn't born blind. The Bible says that he said people look like what? That means that he has what? Right? So he's had interactions with people and with... So he has imagery already. By the way, the Bible is explicit in Mark 8. The word, we restored his sight. He gave him something that he lost. This guy, he was blind. He was born blind. So what did Jesus do? With this guy, he went to the mud. Why? So what did God make man out of? You missed it. Jesus went to the original blueprint. In God's original plan, your family does not suffer from multi-generational diabetes. In God's original plan, there is no multi-generational alcoholic addiction. In God's original... In God's original plan, there is no five-generation deep poverty. In God's original plan, you are blessed and highly favored. You are the righteousness of God, the apple of God's eye. You are anointed and appointed. Is anybody here ready to see God's original plan for you and your family? If that's you, lift up both hands. Because in Jesus' name, you're about to see the full activation of God's original plan. Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. You know this, 1 Corinthians 15, 45. You were born according to the motto of the second Adam. 
His plan, not the first Adam. So when Jesus died and resurrected and sent the Holy Spirit to redeem you and to activate his original purpose for you and your family, the original purpose, every lie of the enemy is broken. Everything that Adam unleashed, that Eve unleashed, and that failure in the garden, the finished work of Christ has redeemed. So live according to God's original plan. Lift up your hands. God has a plan for you, for your children, for your children's children. God has a plan for your now and for your next, for your city, for this region, for America. One more time, in God's original plan, you're not blind, you're not an addict, you're not an alcoholic, you're not broken, you're, you're not full of anxiety, depression, fear, you're not the tail and you're not cursed. In God's original plan, you are blessed. Psalm 138, verse 8, God will fulfill his purpose in my life. His mercy endures forever. He will never forsake the work of his hands. He picked up the dirt, mixed it up with his saliva, and then made mud. You have to give Jesus access to your dirt before he grants you access to your destiny. This is for someone here. In order for this to be fully activated, you will never experience breakthrough while you are obsessed with the people that attempted to break you. Activate the original plan. It's not about where you are in life. It's about who you are in Christ. And when you know who you are in Christ, you will never be held back by where you are in life. Your identity in Christ will bring an end to your captivity in life. Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is so cool. Give me your hand, blind man. What a counterintuitive story. Jesus makes a mess out of a man who was born blind. This really happened. And like a boss, Jesus looks at him and says, go wash yourself doesn't even take him. (laughs) No, you you would think, pero señor, que pasó Jesús? Right? You would think Jesus, well, now that I made this mess, I'm going to walk you and escort you myself. Ay, que lindo. No, he says, go wash yourself, man. In other words, hey, I've already placed upon you what you need for your miracle. This is for five people here. Go wash yourself. You already carry the miracle. You already carry the anointing. You already carry the breakthrough. There's not a miracle coming your way. There's a miracle already on you. You need to go take that step. Has anyone ever been here? Has anyone ever, ever had a season in your life where you had to walk with your mess? Has anyone ever been through a chapter in your life where where things were so discombobulated that you had no idea where you were going, but you walked by faith and not by sight? Has anyone ever looked like this spiritually, morally, emotionally, financially, relationally, where you walked with your mess? People could have judged you. Imagine the people that knew him. This guy is blind. He has mud on his eyes. And he's walking with mud on his eyes, and he's already blind. And they may have criticized you, but you kept on walking because you knew there was a miracle behind that mess. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Anybody here discover, anybody here discover that a wounded worshiper is still a worshiper? Anybody here ever discover that a broken praise is still a praise? And did any, has anyone here ever discovered the truth that when your praise is louder than your pain, nothing can stop you? You walk with your mess. All right, we walk with your mess, let's get them washed. George Jesus, you ready? Put your hands right here. He walked through this mess. All right, we're done for reals. En serio, levante las manitas. Before I heard, but now my eyes have seen Job 42 verse 5. Close your eyes. This guy, 
And then Jesus asked, did it work? How many other times did Jesus ask, hey, did it work? It was intentional. I submit to you for your prayerful consideration the following theologically substantiated supposition. In other words, I found on Google that are pretty extensive that work. Right? What if it was a setup? Because he never asked before. Did it work? He, what if it was, hey, ¿qué puede ser ahora? ¿Trabajó esto? ¿Trabajó la onda? He goes, yeah. The guy was, in the beginning, he says, yes, read it. He goes, yeah. Well, I'm going to be honest here, man. It, it worked, but it, it wasn't like mm, what I expected. I could see people, but they look like Jesus was finding out whether or not this guy would settle for trees. I'm going to prove it to you because sometimes in life we settle for something is better than nothing. We, we settle for crazy things like this. I have three kids. One of my kids loves Jesus. The other two are lost. I'm going to set, I'm going to what? At least I have one. At least I have a partial healing, not the whole thing, but at least I have a, and there are people every day, even in the church that settle for trees. You settle for less than everything God promised you. You settle for less than everything. I came all the way here. I, I've been traveling around the world from Australia to Guatemala. I flew in from Louisiana this morning. I left my place at 3.30 in the morning after going to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I came here because God told me that this house is not just a normal house. This is a church of people that don't settle for trees. I need you to high five your neighbor tell them don't settle 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 for an Ishmael when you have an Isaac with your name on it don't settle for manna in the desert when there's milk and honey waiting for you in the promised land don't settle somebody say don't settle don't settle for partial healing, for part of your family being saved, for part of your destiny coming to pass, for occupying some of the promises. As for you and your house, you won't settle till you see everything that Jesus prayed for. Don't settle. If you're not going to settle, lift up both hands. In life, that's my assignment here today, to tell you in life, under this anointing, never settle for trees. Don't settle for anything less than everything God ordained for you. Everything God promised Sam Rodriguez since I was a kid, I make a demand on it every single day. And when I don't get or see, not in some sort of narcissistic self-absorbed, it's all about me, it's all about Jesus. I want to shine the fullness of Christ to a broken world. So I won't permit, I will not acquiesce to get a portion of what he promised me. I'm not into portions, baby. Uh uh. I'll look back at God and God go, I love you, te quiero mucho, tú eres mi todo. But this is not what you promised me. You promised me this. So I'm going to turn this down. I'm not going to accept this offer. I'm not going to walk into this. Me and my house, we want everything you ordained for us. Everything Jesus died on the cross for. Eternal life, new life, abundant life. I will not settle. Somebody shout like you will not settle. And the fact that he said, Trees, people, the past, the past, in the past, I've seen this. Do not permit yesterday's wounds to hamper today's worship. Do not permit what you went through to define where you're going to. Stop seeing what God has for you today with the lens of what you went through yesterday. In other words, for the love of God, stop saying, look what the devil did, and start shouting, look what the Lord has done. Go. If you've settled, if you have in the past settled for trees, if you have settled for a portion of the destiny, the purpose, if you have settled for living a life of integrity on occasion, if you've settled and you're saying, Pastor Sam, I'm like, after this message, I will not settle. If that's you, again, if that's you, this is it. This is the moment. We have exactly six minutes and one second. If that's you, 
you're going to come out of your seat when I say now, and you're going to join me somewhere, and I'm going to pray for you all here together. But if you, if you, if you say, Pastor Sam, I've never settled for anything. I've got everything. I got, I got todo, kind of. <laughs> you stay right there. But if you're saying, man, I, I've settled. Even here, I've settled. I justified it too. I spiritualized it. I say, but maybe, maybe this is God's thing. No. He, he set him up. Hey, did it work? Did it work? Yeah. Huh? No, not really. And by the way, Jesus did what? What did, what did he do? Like when he said, I, I see trees, what did Jesus do? Did anyone know? What did he do? When he said, I see trees, what did Jesus do again? Anybody know? He, he laid his hands. Oh, but uh, did, did he spit again? No. Don't ask him to do what he already did. He affirmed what he already did. In other words, I'm not going to save you again. I already saved you. I already delivered you. Walk in the fullness of the freedom I already provided for you. Stop asking Jesus to spit again. He'll lay hands again to affirm what he already did. But don't ask him to do what he already did. In other words, let us all of us grow up and walk in what he already did for us. Thanks so much for watching our service at Freedom House OC. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's always my honor, my wife's honor to bring you God's word. And I know that God's best is in your future. Make sure to share, uh, click the bell icon so you're always up to date when new content comes out because we want to be a blessing to your life. We want this channel to be a channel that feeds your future and leads you closer to God. Hey, we love you. God bless.